I will be your anchor of today, uh, taking you through um, the project management side of this uh, particular program. And in today, basically, we will be learning all of these things today, uh, and or more of that if time permits us. If we are able to move quite fast today, we will definitely be doing all of this. Today, we'll be talking about what exactly is a project. Uh, we will be talking about what is project management. Uh, those are two different distinct things. And also we'll be looking at it from two different uh, uh, perspectives or two different methodologies or what we call frameworks. We'll be looking at a PMI framework and the Prince2 methodology. I will talk more about this and I'll be, we'll be talking about what's the relevance of PM training and guidance to you. What exactly is the relevance of PM training and relevance to you? Uh, because I could say a lot of people are saying change of career and all of that. So what exactly is the relevance of this to you? Even if you're not changing career, if you're still a business analyst and you think this will help you, or if you think uh, you're still a DevOps or you're in the local authority and you think that this will definitely still help you in, in doing what you're doing, how does this help me out in all of that? Then is project management a lucrative career? We will definitely be answering that question today. And also we'll be asked answering what exactly is the relevance of uh, certification and experience. So whatever um, I am doing at this point, then I will definitely open that session for question answer. Okay, any, I'll pause, I've been speaking since, and thank you everyone for, for sending him your name and, um, and your career and um, your expectation or your background as well as your expectation. I can see a lot of interesting, um, interesting career here. Are also interesting names as well as um, expectation. Uh, that is, this would definitely guide me. So that at the end of the day, on Friday, on me on next week, Tuesday, when we finish the class, we can always go back to this and talk about it to say, you know what, have we met our expectation? Uh, that is more like performance measurement uh, for us. Okay, I'll pause for two minutes. And if you have any question, please don't go, don't 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 uh, mute yourself. Still stay muted and type your question. What I'm just going to answer typed questions only. So if you have any question, I will wait for one minute. If I don't get any question within the next one minute, I will continue. Okay, okay, in the absence of none, let's continue. Um, so like I said earlier on, we'll be talking, okay, someone is saying the spray man facing health with score master and product owner in uh, the peak chair. Sure. Um, no, it's, it's, it's can get fished out um, for that if I'm right, or FC. It can get phased out, uh, not at all, uh, all because uh, most of them are now adopting. And when we get there, I'll talk about that maybe next week or later before we round off today. We will definitely fortune. Okay, good. And also, everyone, you will help me out if you can rename yourself with just your first name so that when I'm answering your questions, I love calling names. And if I want to ask questions, I love calling names as well so that I don't start calling you um, Galaxy A20. Uh, or Vivo, um, Vivo is all I did, I will allow, I don't start calling you Vivo 2021. Just for the sake of this class, you can rename yourself everyone um, to, to your first name only, that would definitely go a long way. Um, no, it can get phased out, even though uh, for most of the IT projects, some of, a lot of the IT projects are going the, the Scrum, they are going the Scrum way, and, and because of that, but at the same time, most projects are still using are still using the waterfall and Prince 2 as well as PMI. Um, they work more with the waterfall, even though PMI, um, the, the new the new syllabus is coming out in October. October the 1st, a new syllabus is coming out. And with that new syllabus, uh, and I'll still talk about that, they now have a 50% waterfall as well as 50% agile. So they are trying to see, incorporate both together in the form of hybrid. And while I'm talking, I'll still talk about I'll still talk a lot about that, unfortunately. Uh, so just 
just hold on and keep your question. You will get more clarity when we get into that. Okay, so project management. And I'm sure that we're familiar for some of us that might, that might have read a lot of things about this or you've, you've worked or you've heard some advertisement or you've seen some advert about training and all of that. You will have seen these two things appearing a lot, which is PMI as well as Prince 2. We have others, we have others, but I won't be talking about others today. We have what we call the APM, and we have what we call the BCS as well, the one from the BCS, and we have some other ones basically which are not uh, are globally recognized. But these two are the most recognized uh, uh, um, certification or methodology, as well as framework when it comes to project management. The first one you're seeing is the Project Management Institute, which is USA, and I think it's over 56 year old now, 50 year old, when they started this particular um, institute and rolled out what we call the PMBOK, that's the Project Management Body of Knowledge, and they have an exam called a PMP. For some of us, we must have heard about PMP, PMP, PMP. PMI is an is a, is a institute that does project management professional exam, which is called the PMP. So don't mix it. Some, some, sometimes people will tell you that I have PMI. No, you can't have PMI. You can only have PMP from PMI. So that is that. We'll talk about that. And also the other side of it is a Prince 2. So Prince 2 is what they call project in a controlled environment. Project in a controlled environment. Uh, some of you will agree with me that whatever, whatever you, um, US is doing, UK will definitely want to do something. So PMI started up in United States, but UK said, you know what, this doesn't really work 100% with what we do in the UK. So they started off what they call Prince 2, but um, Office of the Government of Commerce, OGC, started off Prince 2, uh, just to adapt Prince 2 to whatever they are doing in the UK environment. And mostly it, they started off using it in the, in the civil service and all of that before, it got rolled out and everybody started using it within the UK and some other countries as well. So that is what Prince2 is. Prince2 just means project in a controlled environment and it is, it is just a, a, a foundation exam as well as practitioner exam. So it's got two exams, foundation and practitioner, while PMI has got just one exam, which is called the PMP. And when I say one exam, PMP means you are, you've got, you, you have three years experience after your um, first degree or seven years experience after your M, um, SSE or your GC or um, all that. And while the one why they have CAPM for people that doesn't have any understanding about, who doesn't have experience. When it comes to project management, they have CAPM, but I don't really advise people to go for CAPM except you're just finished secondary school and you want to get your hand on something. That is when I tell them to go for that. So let's, let's quickly pick up PMI um, so that we we'll do a summary of PMI. And later on, I will talk about, um, because we'll, we'll dive into Prince 2 today, fully into Prince 2. Today, for us to talk about Prince 2, then if time permits us, we'll talk about um, PMI uh, methodology or PMBOK methodology a lot as well, uh, or we move that to next week so that we don't, I don't uh, get you into a lot of a lot of things altogether today. Okay, and some of us must have heard about we might have heard about PMBOK before. PMBOK means Project Management Body of Knowledge. Project Management Body of Knowledge it's a textbook from PMI. That textbook tells you how a project should be done from start to finish. What are the things you think you need in order for you to, to do the project? And if you go on, if you go on Google right now and you type in PMBOK there, you will see that PMBOK at the moment is at the sixth edition. Remember I said earlier on that by 1st of October, they are changing their syllabus. So seventh edition is coming out by 1st of October, just because they've now saw a little dimension, another way where we need to manage project that it is not all about waterfall. I'll talk about what, uh, what, what I meant by waterfall later on. Uh, we can actually do a kind of hybrid, which is uh, um, agile, as well as the waterfall together, which a lot of people call the waja. So that's what it's called, the pinball body on guide. It is like a textbook. 
This provides and promotes a common vocabulary within the project management professional. So if you're looking for what milestone is called, if you want to know what deliverable is called, if you want to know what dependency is called, if you want to know what risk management is all about, what issue management is all about, you can go into Pinbook and there are a few free copies online for the for, for both from the first edition to the sixth edition. You can go online and download and just flip through. It's like 300 or 400 and something pages, pages of um, um, test book. So you can flip over. Pinball Guide establishes guidelines for project management processes, tools, and techniques. So how do you think we should do this particular work? When do you think we should do this particular task? What should this particular task uh, entail or entail? That is where you will get your pinball explaining some of these things to you. So that's what the pinball guide is all about. So if you really want to understand what project management is from start to finish, you should look out, you should look out for the pinball guide uh, for you to, to look at that. Okay, what exactly is Prince 2? Like I said earlier on, Prince 2 in his projects in a controlled environment. Uh, Prince 2 also has his own book. And I think they're on the third edition or fourth edition at this moment. Uh, it came out in 20, 2015. The third edition came out in 2015. They're about if I'm right. Is, oh, 2018, sorry, 2018. came out in 2018. It's a book that describes a method for, method for approaching managing and closing down a project. Like I said, Pinbok, Pinbok is the PMI one. While Prince 2 textbook is understanding Prince 2 is the one from that that textbook also tells you how you can run your project from start to finish it is just a descriptive way it is not a, it is not a, a a box of this is what you must do if you don't do this your project will not succeed no that is not what all of these textbooks are doing they are just guidelines for you to say you know what for you to be able to succeed we advise that you do this for your project to be able to succeed we advise that you do this and that's why it says Prince tells you tells what should be done and why it should be done, but does not say how it should be done. It won't tell you that this is how you must do it. No, it doesn't say that. Prince is not prescriptive, rather, it is descriptive. What is described things you won't prescribe that for that particular project, for that particular um, IT project that you're running, this is how you need to do it. No, it will tell you that. I think that these are the things you should do. You should be able to get your risk register. You should be able to develop your project mandate. You should, you should do this. You should do that. It won't tell you that you must develop your project mandate. You must. No, it's not going to do that. That is how it is structured because some organizations, I've worked in a, in a, in a particular organization where we didn't even use both the PMB, both the PMBOK guide, or the Prince 2 test book or the Prince 2 methodology, what we did was they have their own methodology in house that they are using. But when I got in there, when they told me they're using their own methodology, but when I got into the organization, I worked with the organization, I discovered that what they did was to pick a little bit from the pinball guide and a little bit from Prince 2 and put it all together and call it their own CVP. They just call it their own CVP, cost variance project because that it was a finance project. So that's what they were using it for. And they were just, uh, as we go along the line, you will see that most of the document or most of the template or document, let me put it that way, most of the artifacts that you need to develop in, in, in when you're using a P, PMI uh, framework is different from the artifacts you will develop when, you are, when you're using your Prince 2 methodology. So as we go ahead, you will definitely see that. So how does a pinball flow? Pinball flow this way. And let me put a caveat to this. Because the pinball guide, uh, um, the seventh edition is not available for public consumption yet. My training when it comes to pinball guide is still subject to sixth edition. But I can tell you right now that the difference is clear. The difference is huge between the sixth edition and the seventh edition. Prior to this time, the difference between one edition and the other edition is not always very big. It's always, you know what, 
we are adding one more, one more knowledge area, we are adding one more tools, tool and techniques to this. But on this particular textbook, the sixth edition is entirely different from the seventh edition. So my particular training for today is still a little bit focused on Pimbo, even though I'll still talk more about the new edition so that you understand how things, because I know that we're still in a, on a journey and by the time they release, by the time we're done with our, with our training or program, that's when they will be releasing that. And a lot of organizations will not be adopting that immediately. A lot of them will not be adopting that. They will definitely want to see a lot of people getting used to it before they adopt. But I will explain to you because it, it's, it's more simpler than what it used to be. Seventh edition is now very, very simple than what uh, sixth edition used to be. But it's not, you won't see it anywhere in, 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 in public. It's not available for public consumption at the moment or for public referencing at the moment. So don't, don't stress yourself too much if you're looking for the seventh edition and you don't see it. So for pinball flow, pinball will tell you that impute will tell you that for, for you to have, for you to be able to do, for you to be able to get this particular result, you need this impute. These are the things you need. And these are the tools and techniques you need to do in order for you to get this. So pinball flow is more of impute the tools and techniques and whatever we're getting out of it, which is a hard put. Don't bore yourself too much with this. You're not gonna, you're not gonna need it too much, except you wanna write an exam. While Prince 2 is focused more on what exactly do we need to do? What is our work output? From our work output, let's talk about the outcome of it and how does that outcome affect business benefit? So Prince 2 is business benefit focused, and you will see it as we move along. I'll repeat, Prince 2 is business benefit focused. While project, while, um, while Pinbock is more concerned about what exactly is the output, what do we need to get out of this particular project? What exactly do we, we need to get, you know what, project schedule out? We need to get our project charter out. We need to get our this out. This is the particular deliverable out. While Prince Two is saying, you know what? Are we meeting what we said we would, we would do right from the beginning of the project? We're saying that we'll realize two million pounds. Are we still on that trajectory to realize our two million pounds? That is exactly what our Prince Two works. Prince Two is always business benefit focused at the end of the day. So note that particular flow. Pinbock is more of impute, the tools and techniques we need to use, as well as the output. While Prince 2 flows with the work product output, the outcomes, and the business benefit. Okay, don't worry. This little part might seem boring, but we'll get an interesting part of very soon. I'm just trying to tell you the difference between both, because I know a lot of people might have questions, or you've heard about that before, and you're thinking, about, okay, what are they saying? This one is saying PMI. That one is saying Prince 2. How do I know which one to go for? How do I know which one uh, to apply while I'm working? How do I know which one my organization is using and all of that to be able to plug myself into that? Like I said earlier on, if you have questions, if you have questions, you can continue to type in your questions into that, please. And as I, as, I, as I talk, I'll be picking up those questions one after the other. So let's talk about the five main aspects to Prince 2. In order to be success, to successfully complete any similar pro job of work, there are five main aspects that needs to be considered. Meaning if you're a project manager on a project, if you're a business analyst on a project and you're doubling as a project manager, if you're a project management office analyst, a project management office lead, a project management office planner, a project management office manager, a PMO support, uh, a, a, an interim project manager, an assistant project manager, and you're on a project. What are the things you need to think about? The method to be used, in other words, how will you approach the job? First of all, you need to think about what exactly is the method. How do we approach the job? <coughs> how will the work be organized? What are the main factors that needs to be taken into account? 
who will I have responsibility for what? And now will progress be monitored and communicated? That is what project is all about. Managing a project, you want to talk about what are the methods we need to use in order for us to manage this project? How are we going to approach it? How will this work be organized? Who is doing what? How are we organizing it? Are we doing section A first before we move to section B, before we move to section C? Or we want to run both section B and section C and section D together? You need to understand that as a project manager. That is what project, project is more about managing, coordinating, delivering. What are the main factors that need to be taken into account? Main factors to be taken into account. A typical example that the world never saw was a COVID-19. The world didn't see COVID-19. Let's assume there was a project. Meanwhile, there were a lot of projects. Let's take a typical example is Olympics. Tokyo 2020. Let's pick up Tokyo 2020 or Euro 2020 that just finished and all that. Tokyo 2020 was supposed to be, or Tokyo, or Tokyo, Tokyo. Tokyo 2020 was supposed to be last year, July. But nobody saw the pandemic coming. Let's assume we've seen the pandemic coming. That is, what are the main factors that need to be taken into account? Let's assume we've said, you know what, the pandemic is only in China but there's a risk of it coming from China to everywhere. So you're taking things into account, things that could go wrong. You're taking a lot of things into account within that area. That is what we're seeing. What are the main factors that need to be taken into account? You're talking about budget. Is, is, are we gonna have the budget? Are we gonna have a sufficient budget? Do we have policies that might affect our project from the government? Are we gonna wake up tomorrow and discover that Twitter has been suspended? Are we gonna wake up tomorrow and discover that banks are not allowed to trade cryptocurrencies? Are we gonna wake up tomorrow and discover that, you know what? We can't even go to the market without using our nose mask and all of that while on a project. So these are factors you need to take into account while you're developing or while you're managing your projects. And also you wanna talk about who, who will have responsibility for what? What are the people that will be responsible? Do we have, do we have Abel as our project manager? Do we have Fortune as our, as our, 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 our risk manager? Or is Ladun that we have for that and all of that? So you have to, so you have to be sure that you, you, you understand who is doing what and how we will progress how will progress be monitored and communicated? As a project manager, you want to do a performance measurement. Remember, I just said it now that I want everyone to write their expectation down because along the line, I want you to measure yourself to monitor your progress that as is my expectation being met or expectations or are my expectations, if you have more than one, being met by uh, this particular introduction. So same thing goes up for projects. Project has got KPIs, key performance indicators that are stated as early as possible in your project. And that is how you want to make sure that you're monitoring and you're communicating it to everybody to say, you know what, well, we've delivered this. Woohoo, we've done that. Woohoo. No, we we're saying we'll deliver this, but we're not delivering this. What exactly is the problem? So that you can be able to measure your performance. And also if you're measuring performance and you're you're not delivering as expected. You can actually quickly look at what exactly is a problem and you can actually correct what exactly is a problem. Let's look at how Prince2 look at variables, the project variables within Prince2 that must be properly managed. So these are the six key variables within the project that must be properly managed. Tosi is asking that which one is, the, which one is better or which one do I prefer between PMI or PM, PMBOK and Prince 2. I've got, I've got both. And the question is, what area? The country, is, the country also differs as well. You have to look at the country. If you're, in, if you're, if you're in Canada, you're in US, definitely it, it's not about which one do you prefer or which one will you go for. Automatically, you have to go for PMP. If you're in the UK, I, I, this is not my, my statistics is not, is not um, 
is that accurate or oh, i don't I'm, I'm not referencing anybody or any 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 data but i'm just put, throwing it out there to say you know what 80 percent if not 85 percent of all the industries in the uk are using fringe 2 methodology almost all of them are using pursue we have few organizations and when i moved to uk when i moved to uk nine years ago or eight years now when I moved to the UK eight, eight years ago, what helped me was because what what one of the things that helped me, let me put it that one of the things that helped me to get a job was because I had PMP. It was quite scarce to see people then having PMP in the UK. Everybody was going for Prince 2 and all of that. And that particular organization happens to be a, a, a British and American organization where what they were using in-house was actually the PMBOK uh, 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 framework. So for them, it was quite easy for them to bring me in because they saw that I understood some of this. And one of the things you can do again is if you're in the UK, you can go on job serve and just type in, just type in, in one of the keywords, just type in PMP or PMI. And you'll see a lot of jobs that are asking for that. And with that, you can actually trace how much of that is being requested. But if you're in the US, you go, if you are listening to us from the US, listening to us from UK, I mean from Canada, from Australia, you can't, you don't, you don't look for that. PMP is a hint thing in those three, in those three countries. In Nigeria, it is it is a life of both in Nigeria. Some organizations will tell you PMP, while some organizations will tell you, you know what, do you have Prince Two certification? Well, I've seen a lot of the PMP in Nigeria, more than I've seen that of, of Prince Two. But like I said, understand the market so that you can understand where to plug yourself into properly. And if you're, if you're financially buoyant, why not? Why not do both? If you, if you are, that is if you are, or if not. Uh, and I'll also say this at the end of the day, that certification is not really, it's not really the, uh, the end game of this whole thing. Is you having proper experience and you can defend whatever you know more than the certification okay all right so these are the prince 2 project variables that prince 2 uh, uh will definitely ask you that you know what these key six key variables are what we monitor are what we hold there as if a project manager the first one is the cost you have to be able to manage the cost. Your job as a project manager is to make sure that you're delivering within the budget and you're not running over the budget. So cost is a very, very key variable. The time scale. The time scale is telling you that when are we starting a project and when are we delivering this particular project or when are we delivering the key deliverables within a project as a project is running. So time scale is so vital as well. Then quality. The quality of the work, Prince 2 is so particular about quality of work delivered. You can't afford to deliver something that is not worth of quality. What do we agree on? And I love the way, I love the way Pinbock describes quality. Quality doesn't mean great. You know what? Quality is just two things. Quality uh, means, uh, da, 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 let me type it. Quality means, uh, Conformance to requirement, and also quality means fitness for use. So, those two definitions are what we call quality conformance requirement. So, if the project, if the project sponsor is asking you to to deliver something. It is none of your business to go and check if that thing is is of good grade, of or, of or is not of good grade. You can suggest to the project to your project sponsor that you know what that thing you asked me to deliver, it's not of good grade. But if the project sponsor is asking you to deliver something, your own is to conform to the requirement of your sponsor. Have you conformed to the requirement? Have you delivered what your sponsor is asking you to deliver? If the answer is yes, yes, the quality of your project is good. Is your project fit for use? I'm asking you, a typical example is, okay, let me, it's actually out there. Let's assume Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson vaccine, COVID-19 is what is out there now. 
Johnson and Johnson vaccine has been said, you know what, you need to stop because we discover that, you know, when you use Johnson and Johnson, it's, it has increased the blood clot in particular age range. It has increased the heart problem in this particular age range and all of that. And you want to ask yourself, is that fit for use? It's not fit for use at that particular point for that particular age group. For that particular age group, that particular vaccine, it's not fit for use. So if it's not fit for use, then that means the quality of that particular vaccine is in question. That is what we're talking about. Does that make any sense to us? So if someone is saying that, deliver something for me, are we conforming to the requirement? Is it fit for use? If the response is yes, you've conformed to the requirement, then you're good to go. Does that make any sense? For some of the BA guys around us, for some of the BA guys, folks in this particular um, training today, they will understand this because they always call a requirement, both the functional requirement or, or the business requirement and all that. That is what the, that is what the business is saying. That's our requirement we're collecting. And by the time we pick up those requirements, we're good to go. All right, let's run. Um, we've got a few slides to cover. Scope. Scope of work is what is said to be delivered. What is the scope? The scope says, you know what? We need to deliver 1 million jabs of AstraZeneca to North London. 1 million jabs of AstraZeneca vaccine to North London. That is a scope. We can't afford in project management, let me put it straight now, in project management, you can't afford to deliver 1 million 100 jabs. And you can't afford to deliver 999,999. No. The scope says deliver 1 million jobs. Yours is to deliver 1 million jobs. If you want to deliver more than 1 million jobs, you need to go through what we call the change request process. If you want to deliver less than 100 million jobs, you have to go through the change request process and it must be approved for you to deliver more or to deliver less. You must go through the approval. So I'm sure in, in somebody's head, someone is saying that, but, 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 but you want to please your customer, you want to, you know, you want to go plate and all of that, or you want to uh, do more and all of that. It's called go plating. Go plating is not allowed in project management. So as a project manager, as a PMO person, you have to have this at the back of your mind that when I'm delivering my project, what is the requirement? I need to deliver what the requirement is saying. I need to deliver, I must conform to the requirement. You have to make sure that risk are being managed. I just spoke about COVID-19 and, and, and the Olympics. And at the moment, at the moment, I personally, I have my fears. I still have my fears that that thing is not being managed, that Tokyo 2021 or 2020 moved to this year is not still being managed well with the COVID-19 that we have out there. I'm just hoping that we won't have an outbreak. Does that make any sense? That on your project, there will always be risk. Risk of... Uh, finances, risk of finances not being available, uh, risk of one resources leaving, one particular resource leaving the project before the end of a project, or uh, risk of um, um, if it's a website or it's something you're developing or an API you're developing, or risk of hackers and all of that, risk of downtime uh, and all of that. Those are, those are the kind of risk you want to quickly pick up and document and make sure that those things are being managed. Remember I said Prince2 is well focused on benefit. Are we managing benefit? Are we delivering the benefit we say we will deliver? So that is also very, very critical when we are talking about um, Prince2. Okay, what are the characteristics of a project that Prince2 um, talks about? There are five characteristics of a project. A project will always go through change. So let me explain that properly. Because we're saying we're delivering a project doesn't mean there won't be change. Along the line, there will be change or changes along the line. When you don't manage the changes or the change that are occurring, that is where we have a problem with quality or we have problem with the scope. The moment you're saying that, you know what, we need to deliver Something I read for some of us from Nigeria, something I read this morning in Nigeria is, you know what? 12, 12 Super Tocano A29 um, uh, missile launchers were procured from the US and they were supposed to be delivered July this year. The whole 12 were supposed to be delivered this year. But as of last year, any last year, 
there was an agreement or they came back with a change request to say, you know what, we can only deliver six this year and we'll deliver the six later on in the year or, or next year and all of that. You can see that it was a project, but along the line, they brought about the change and the change went through a change request and Nigerian government approved that particular change to say, you know what, yes, that's fine. Go ahead with that. We've approved that, deliver that. And so you can see as a project is going in, there will always be changes. And this is where um, uh, um, Agile is taking the lead now because Agile is open to change compared to what we used to have with Prince 2 and with Waterfall, where you have to go through the project, you have to go through your waterfall and all that before you know what, well, let's change and you, you now come back. But you know what, as change is coming, Scrum is saying that you can do that. Agile is saying, you know what, you can just, you can, you can always make that change. Just, just make sure that you go through the process. And that's exactly what Prince 2 also is saying. Just make sure that your changes are going through the process. So on projects, guys, I know we're focusing on being a project manager. Do you know that on project, we have people we call the change manager and they pay them real good. Change managers are just there to make sure that on your project, and they have project management knowledge as well, they just manage this change. And they're making sure that, you know what, on your project, any changes or any, any, any they, they, if you say, you know what, on this particular website we're building, we have to incorporate this particular change because we just discovered that Paystack cannot work with this particular whatever, but Flutter Wave will work with that because Paystack has got this particular stuff and they, they, which we can incorporate with our own website. Uh, the payment will not go through all of that. And meanwhile, you sign the contract. Initially, you sign the contract for Paystack that you told your uh, sponsor that it will be Paystack. And you have to come back to your sponsor to say, you know what, along the line, apologies, our risk, we did our risk analysis and doing our risk analysis, we discovered that, you know what, uh, Paystack just removed this particular functionality which will not work with our website that we're building, what we can do, this particular change, this is the impact of this change. It is either we include this or whatever, if we have the fund to include that, if we include it, this is how much it's gonna cost us to be able to still work with page start, but this we won't need to uh, spend any amount of money if we go with Flutter Wave, but the only downtime with Flutter Wave is we can only collect our money in dollars, we can collect in euros and all of that. You can see what, that's the job, job of a change manager. A change manager is just there to make sure that all of the changes, the impact of the changes are well captured and explain to everybody to say, this is it, that is that. And you can see it's all about project management, but that person is called a change manager looking at that. So on project, those things are bound to happen on project, okay? Projects are temporary. Projects are always temporary. We say temporary project must every project must have a start and a finish date. No matter whether whether the, 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 the end date is 10 years time, but there is an end date. A typical example is personal polio. There was a there was Africa was given Af, Nigeria as a Nigeria as, as an example. They say, you know what, we've got a 10-year plan to face out polio. And even if they faced out the polio sometime last year, I was reading a report two weeks ago as well that, that polio resurfaced again somewhere in a particular state as well. You can see they have a project. It was 10 years, but they have an end date to it. They have an end date to it. So no matter what, there is always an end date. There's always a start date and an end date to a project. So your project must have both a start date and a finish date. And that is why we call it a temporary endeavor. So when we get into some of the programs we're doing, for some of our, some of our business analysts, some of our DevOps guys, uh, our testers, you will see that the project you will be given as your internship is three months, it starts, there's a start time and there's a finish time, as well as this particular uh, um, um, project, okay? My guys are sleeping on me. Um, Francisca just said she can't hear me. I would have expected my guys, my support today to say they can hear. Thank you, Femi, good, I'll go ahead. So, unique, we have unique, it must be unique. When we say projects, project, all projects must be unique. They must be unique, they must be delivering something so different, something new, something interesting. Because you deliver the project for 
for BP and you're delivering the same project, quote and unquote, for BAT doesn't mean it's not, it's not unique. It is unique to the organization. Different set of people are working on it. So it is quite unique. And a project must be cross-functional. It can be cross-functional, cross-functional in the sense that we can take people from finance, take people from tax office, take people from procurement for us to be able to deliver this particular project. It doesn't mean that it must be, it must be one particular department or one particular set of people that are delivering this particular project. It can be cross-functional. Okay. Thank you, Deji. Thank you, Lado. All right, good. So quickly, so to, to the question that, um, to the question that um, Tosi asked earlier. So these are the key differences when we're comparing both PIMBOK and Princeton together. PIMBOK says, a PIMBOK is a comprehensive information on all aspects of project management. On all aspects, is well detailed. While pursue practical project management methodology based on seven principles, they have their own, they've grouped everything under seven principles. Now, driven by customer's requirement, remember, Driven by customers, remember when I showed you the flow of the pinball flow, the pinball was more of the inputs, tools and techniques, and the outputs. We talked about the deliverable. Remember, Prince 2 is driven by what? By the business case. The business case is that document that tells us the viability and the benefit of the project. What is this project going to benefit us? The business case will tell you. So that is why you can see driven by the business case. The business case is developed. And that is exactly what our focus is. What is in there? Two million pounds must be delivered. That's, that is our focus. A knowledge-based approach to project management. What pursue is about process-based. It defines what, when, who, and how, and how through a series of seven management processes. Takes you through how that seven process, not the how to do that particular project, but how through that seven management processes. Talking about the seven management processes, describes core practices and wider range of techniques. This is boxed into seven again. Primary, the project manager's role. So this is when it comes to roles and responsibility. I have issues with Pinbock compared to what I have with Prince Two. Pinbock is saying, you know what, the project manager is responsible for the risk management. The project manager is responsible for change. The project manager is responsible for procurement. The project manager must be responsible for issues, for scheduling and all of that. Meanwhile, for Prince 2, Prince 2 actually established everybody's role to say, this is a project manager, this is a team manager, this is a project assurance person, this is a project support person and all of that. This should be their function and all of that. Meanwhile, primarily, the project manager is primarily responsible or accountable, let me put it that way, accountable for everything that is happening on the project. Meanwhile, Prince 2 had it or or, or, or fleshed out. Procurement, HR management, more depth on techniques such as M value management, critical path analysis. But for Prince, Prince doesn't say anything about procurement as well as human resource management. Prince doesn't say anything about Prince, it's just more of roles and responsibility clarity as well as business case, nothing on procurement. Uh, for these two levels of certification, I don't agree with that. Um, definition of two levels is all, only PMP, but if you don't have any years of experience, you'll be expected to do CAPM for, for Prince 2. Yeah, Zainab, I know I, I, I was expecting someone to ask me that question that I said I thought Prince 2 doesn't deal with the how. Now, the how here is talking about the seven management processes to say, you know what, this is how you would do use these seven management processes, not how to run the project. But this is how to use these seven, seven processes, my main process, and we'll talk about that seven processes later on. And that's why how through a series of seven my main process. So how to use this seven process my main process, but not how to run your project. Makes sense. When we get when we get to that particular processes, I'll talk more about those seven, seven, seven things. Okay. I've been talking for 50 for 50 minutes now. So I'll take a pause for one minute or two minutes. If you have questions, you can type in your questions. I'll pick them up.
So I'll come back again by 9.02. By my time, I'll just give you a breather because I know I've been talking since. One more minute and I'll be back. But if you have your questions, you can type in your questions from what I've been talking about since, then I can pick them up and just answer them before I continue. Um, yes, Abby, I'm on mute. Okay, yeah, it's 9.02 now. I'm back now. Okay, yes. So Michael is asking, what's the difference between the French two certifications? Yes, so we have, it's two, it's two stages, basically. It's majorly two stages. It's the foundation. It's a foundation and the practitioner. Foundation is 75 questions, multiple questions. And I think it was past 35 questions out of that 75 questions. It's more of definition of terms. Foundation is more of definition of terms. And I always tell people, and this is how I tell people, and I think I've said this on this, on this platform countless times in the past before to say, you know what? Or when I'm doing my, when I do people in classes, in class, and that class is always like, I think six weeks, for them, I always tell them that, you know what, before the end of a sixth week, I want to see your principal foundation at the minimum. Minimum I will do for me to review your CV for you is I need to see principal foundation on your CV. If there is no principal foundation, because if that's if you're in the UK, let me put it that way. That is if you're in the UK, the minimum you need to have on your CV is principal foundation. That is the minimum you need to have. So while you're having your program, while you're doing your program, you should start learning your principal foundation. There are a lot of materials out there, a lot of materials. Like I say, it's just definition of terms. Definition of terms of what are the seven principles, what are the seven themes, and what are, what are the seven processes. It's gonna center around those seven, seven, seven things, okay? So that is foundation. You move from foundation into practitioner. Practitioner is more of hands-on experience. They want to see scenario-based. Practitioner is scenario-based. Uh, and, and, and a lot of, it's quite simple as well. If you get the techniques on how to, how to pass it. So that is how it works. Um, the, the foundation as well as a practitioner. So that's that. Um, Jubu, if you have any question, you need to type, please. If you have any question, just type. Okay. Um, Pelumi is asking that that she joined, I mean, he joined late, if that's a E, which of the two principles is widely accepted? I said this earlier on to say, you know what, this is dependent on where you're going. This is dependent on the country where you are. Basically, for you to see, if you're in the UK, I would definitely advise you to go for Prince 2. If you're in America, if you're listening to us from the US, Canada, or Australia, I would advise you to go for PMP. If you're in Nigeria, it's dependent on the organization. Most organizations in Nigeria, organizations in Nigeria, actually request for uh, uh, PMP at the most. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Did you? Thank you. Okay. Enola is asking, can someone have equivalent to Prince2 to start working as a PMO? I didn't get that question properly, please. Enola, if you can reframe that question. Safe to say that the objectives of PMP and Prince2 are the same, but PMP is more recognized. Absolutely, absolutely, Deji, very correct. Um, De Dej, the objectives are the same. The objective is basically to make sure that projects are being managed and the end results are delivered. 
even though Prince 2 is more focused on business case, which is more of the end result as well, while Prince 2, I mean, Pinbok is more, uh, um, more on the deliverables, which is the end result as well. So it's all about making sure that projects are delivered within time, making sure that risks are well managed, making sure that uncertainty are che checked, changes are managed, making sure that the benefit is delivered, making sure that nothing happens to school and all that. Okay, Emmanuel is saying I'm Prince 2 certified, but all I hear now is that Prince 2 is outdated because it is all about Agile. Can you advise on this thing? Yeah, I said this earlier on to Emmanuel, and a lot of people are saying that all because um, some, some, of the, some of the projects we have at this point, some of the projects we have at this point are, or a lot of projects you see around, let me put it that way, quote and unquote, for, for some of the, um, uh, medium scale to small scale organizations, uh, application development and for application development, I know that you get more of agile environment because it's how it goes. You have to roll out patches and all of that. So they go with agile environment. So sometimes they will tell you that, no, we're not using waterfall, but like I said, it is almost, you still, you still have that project management methodology and a lot of organizations are still using the waterfall methodology because Prince 2 is basically on the waterfall methodology. That's what it is. It is not outdated. And I can tell you that in the last 14 years, I'm on a very large project at the moment, uh, a very large program at the moment with an organization. And within the organization, only one project out of the 16 projects we're working on is using Agile while the rest 15 are using, are using a, a waterfall, the normal project management methodology, which it talks about your risk management. So, so it is, and I think I said this earlier on, it is not about the certification itself, but it's about you understanding the methodology behind a managing project, which when you do preach to, you will definitely have a better understanding how a project is managed and all that. Even though few medium scale, few small scale, are running on agile just because all, most of the things they are running out is is um, is uh, application and all that. And when you want to roll out your SAP for Anna, uh, most organizations are running out now. Service now, uh, you want to roll out Success Factor. You want to roll out your uh, MS Dynamics and all that. Some a lot of a lot a lot of that is still within the waterfall. So I'm surprised a lot of people are saying, you know, it's getting phased out. No, it won't get phased out even for the next 10, 20 years. I can assure you that. Okay. But like I said, if you have the opportunity to still learn about your Agile, like I said, I've got, I've got, I've got a lot of certifications when it comes to Agile and all of that. And, and, and I've, I've worked, I've worked in an organization for where we use Agile as well. We just couldn't use Agile. We had to combine both Waterfall and Agile together and we call it Agile. And all that makes sense. Okay, good. Um, and you're going to ask that question again, or you're clear with what I'm asking, or you're asking. Okay, Prince Two. So let's talk about Prince Two versus Pimba. Oof, my time is running. Maybe I might need to ask for one more extra day, if 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 that will be permitted, uh, to to end this for three weeks. Okay, a project Prince Pr Pimba. Prince Two says, you know what? A project is a temporary organization that is created for the purpose of delivering one or more business products according to an agreed business case. You can see now that Prince 2 is still talking about business case. So I'm saying that it's a temporary organization. That means a temporary team. It's a temporary team set up to say, you know what, you guys, you are handling projects for that and for the purpose of delivering one or more business product. What project, you, uh, I love what Dej said. And if you look, if you take these two together, they are just saying the same thing. Pinbook is saying a project, temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product, service, or result. Purpose of delivering one, more, one or more products according to an agreed business case. Now saying the same thing. Yes, you're right, Emmanuel. They came up with Agile just because they want to fit in as well. Yeah, they came up with Agile. And also for Pinbook also came up with a new, the seventh edition, like I said earlier on, is 50% waterfall, 50% agile that is coming out in October. So they are not strictly running on 100% um, uh, wide uh, waterfall anymore. Okay, so project management, according to Prince 2, they say, you know what, 
If you want to manage projects, you have to understand planning, delegating, monitoring, control of aspect of all aspects of project. You can see that your job as a project manager, your job as a PMO, your job as a PMO coordinator, a support, analyst, planner, is to plan, make sure that projects are planned well, delegated well, monitored and controlled of all of the aspects in order for us to deliver and manage those six things we spoke about earlier on. The time, the cost, the quality, the scope, the benefits, and the risk. I love how Pinbox put it. Pinbox said, you know what, the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirement. What they are saying is they are just saying the same thing. What are the project requirements? What are the project activities? The project activities, the time, the cost, the quality, the scope, the benefits, as well as the risk. What I meant is, do you, do you have before someone can start working as a project? No, you don't have to, Ediola, but I always advise people to always have it. You know the reason why most of your CVs, most of your CVs are now passed through their artificial AI software where all they are looking for is a buzzword. So if you're saying you're looking for a project admin or a coordinator or a PMO role, and you don't even understand Prince 2 methodology, your CV is not saying anything about Prince 2. You know what? There are hundreds, uh, hundreds of CVs out there that are talking about that already. And you've shot yourself in the foot because of that. Like I said, it's simple to pass. It's just definition of terms. Prince 2 foundation is more of definition of terms. Did you, can you define that? Do you know what document you need to prepare at this particular stage? Do you know the content of this document at this particular stage? So, like I said, it is easy, and I think it goes for 230 30 pounds at this point. So, if you're if you're buoyant enough to do that, you can always you can always do that. Okay, all right, good. So, most of you will have heard me say three different things in, since morning, and you're like, okay, why? What's 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 this? What's this mix of, uh, of, of, of nomenclature? You've heard me saying project today. You've heard me saying program, but I'm not sure if I've said anything about portfolio today already. So let's quickly define this because I'll be, I'll be using more of these three terms as, as we go ahead. A project is, like we explained earlier on, it's a temporary endeavor. It's a temporary endeavor undertaking to produce a unique product or service. That's a project. So we're saying that, you know what? For us to deliver a particular, let's, let's, let's say, okay, we want to roll out. Let's assume we want to roll out uh, a front-end application, which is uh, Office 365. We want to roll out Office 365 to all of the um, Blue Sky Citadel office. Blue Sky Citadel office is somewhere in Dartford, and it's a very big building. They have, they have 200 uh, uh, workstations in that particular building. I'm just, I'm prophesying now. Let's put it that way. They have 200 uh, 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 um, workstation within that, within that building. And we need to migrate all of them, all of that. We need to install and also migrate them from what they're using at the moment to Office 365 and all that. We can say that, you know what, that migration, as it is, is a project. So migration of, the, of all the 200 laptops, or all the 200 workstations, so Office 365 is a project. We're now saying, you know what, with all of these um, 200 laptops as well, 100 of these laptops will be working with SAP 4 ANA. They're working with SAP 4 ANA. We need to also make sure that we deploy SAP 4 ANA to all of those um, 200 or that particular site, 200, uh, 100 out of the 200. So the Office 365 migration is a project. The SAP4 ANA also is a project. Putting both together because they are similar project, delivering it um, one particular purpose, we can say it is called a program. Does that make sense? That is a program. Now, mean a combination of two or more similar projects. A combination of two or more similar projects 
in order to have proper management of that, in order to deliver proper benefits, basically it's all about benefits, in order for us to deliver proper benefits, to realize benefits very well, in order for us to use the centralized resources, we'll say that is a program. So a project is a temporary endeavor. A program is a combination of two or more projects for two or more similar project. Let me put it that way. Similar project must be similar for us to be able to deliver that. Now, portfolio. Portfolio is the combination of two, whether project, combination of two or more projects or programs, not necessarily similar in order to achieve the organization's strategic goal. One of the projects I worked on was a funny project and I, it was an interesting project for me. This particular project wants to increase the production rate within a factory. So that means we need to work on the production, meaning we, have, we used to have um, two, we used to have two and three liter, two and three liter cooking oil. And the strategic goal of the organization is to plug into the five liter market as well as the one liter market cooking oil. So then I say, you know what, for us to be able to do this, one, we have to refurbish or enlarge the whole production area. The whole production industry room needs to be increased. Why we increase that? The warehouse, the finished good warehouse, where the finished goods are being processed needs to be increased as well. Meaning, the racking systems needs to be increased. And also for us to be able to plug into the strategic goal of the organization, we need to automate the racking system. If we're increasing the production in the organization, meaning we need to bring more staff, meaning the car parking within the organization will need to increase. So we need to increase the car parking area. That is civil. You can see I've moved from production to racking to civils. And also, because these are new systems we are bringing in as well, we need to make sure we integrate them into our SAP, into Mesh tool. That is IT. And while we are doing this as well, we need to make sure that customers are being sourced for. We also need to make sure that customers are being chased and also customers are being updated. We talks about customer service. You can see this particular project has got civils, it's got IT, it's got production, it's got racking, it's got customer service, it's got supply chain because we need to do the uh, the um, uh, what we what do we what do we call it? Uh, new goods, dry goods, dry goods management as well. You can see all of these; they are not similar projects because civil is not similar to production or so. All of these are called portfolio. That's a portfolio within an organization. And they can have different project managers, different program managers, and all of that. So that is what we call a portfolio. Does that, do, do we understand that now? So that's portfolio to program to project. So that is what is called. So you will be seeing me throwing that around. And also when you're applying for a role, you can see project manager and you see program manager or program uh, 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 office leader. And you say, you know what? No, that's not for me. What we are doing is we're using, we're actually using the same methodology only that the sizes are what is bigger than the other. Okay. So for Prince 2, remember I said this earlier on, for Prince 2, Prince 2 has got uh, seven, even though he's saying six variables, the seventh one, I'll talk about the seventh one uh, later on. It's got the seven variables, I mean, sorry, six variables. We spoke about these six variables earlier on, the cost, the time scales, the scope, the quality, the risk, and the benefit. And... But focus usually will be the seven principles, the seven themes, and the seven processes. And that's what we'll be talking about very, very soon. I'm not going to run, excuse me, I'm not going to waste more time on this particular slide as we'll be taking them one after the other within the next 30 minutes. All right. So let's talk about the certifications. Even though, like I said earlier on, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, mock, I'm not concerned about certification as I am concerned about the experience. And someone will say, but, uh, but Ayo, I can see when you were introducing yourself, you have almost all of the certifications and all of that. Yes, because along the line, I want to see how 
how uh, industry standards are being used, how international standards are being done, and all of that. That's why I need to keep on learning, and I will appreciate if you also get into that and you do that, but don't rely because you have Prince 2 practitioner and you think that that is what will get you the job. No, you must have that experience, which is very, very vital, or understand, not even experience, understand what is happening within that space that if you're called upon, you can actually defend your CV. If you are called upon, you can actually carry out the work as it is. Okay, so for project management certification, I said we have CAPM and the PMP. For Prince 2, we have a foundation and fractional. Like I said, we have a box. Box is formerly called the, it's now called the BCS, I think. It's now called the BCS, which is Project Management Foundation. Then we have another one in the US, in the UK, which is called the APMP. APMP is not really that popular. There are a few organizations that are using it. A typical organization that is using it is, um, um, is um, what is it called? Aviva, Aviva uses, use, use that. Aviva, Aviva and some organizations are using that. Michael is asking, how do we get the experience? One of the ways to get the experience is to volunteer. One of the ways to get the experience is to read, keep on reading. One of the ways to get that, that experience basically is to come for one of the internship that, that, has, been, that has been done at, at the moment. Like I said, it, it, for, for projects, for project management and the internship, it will, be, it will be funny to say, you know what? Um, and, and I think that that was why Digi was more careful. Digi was quite careful on uh, uh, last week when he was talking about the internship for project management and all of that, because it's quite difficult to say, you know what, we just want to put an internship for all project managers. It doesn't work that way because the project manager is there to actually coordinate what the testers are doing, what the de uh, DevOps guys are doing, what the, what this what the what this person is doing and all of that. So it will be difficult to say, you know what, uh, we're running internship, we're running a boot camp for all the project managers. Let's come in. So if we're saying that when we develop our when we develop our project mandate, who are we giving the project mandate to? We're giving it to the project manager. What would the project manager be working on and all of that? So it's quite it's quite difficult. Except, but one of the ways to do that is if at the end of the day, the so whole we have is ten people that want to go into project management, then we can say, you know what, you're the project manager for that project within that, you're the project manager for that. And what I, what I would do is to make sure I guide those, those folks to be able to see, okay, what are the documents you need to prepare? How do you uh, organize your meeting? How do you go about this? How do you manage your risk? How do you manage your issues? How do you identify risk or identify issues, manage them and solve the problem? Well, as we go along the line, you will definitely understand exactly what I am talking about here. Keep changing career was the best way to gain some experience while applying for the jobs. Like I said earlier on, uh, um, internship is one of those ways. And uh, trust me, and if you're in the UK, if you are really, really in the UK, you can go on job set. There are, I, was, I, was sending, I was doing a research for someone recently. We had, we had, um, we had someone who came, to, who came to work for us recently and um, she said she doesn't want to go to uni anymore. She wants to do internship and she's interested in project management because she saw that I'm into project management and all of that. And I, I, I didn't even know that such opportunity or opportunities are there in the UK where there are some organizations that they will take in fresh people without any project management knowledge. They will take them in, pay them and take them through internship process and all of that. And that's what they want from them. And if you go on job serve or you go to career um, and CV library, or you go on Google, just type in project management internship in the UK, you will find loads and you can always apply. Just keep on applying for that. And if it's six months, if it's three months, if you can do that, and if you get in and you can do that, that would definitely go a long way. And like I said, one of those things that I saw that most of those people asked is, is do you have Chris two foundation? Even if you don't have any experience, they just want to see that they just want to see your interest, basically. Let me put it that way. They just want to see that, they, does this person have an interest? Let me tell, let me quickly share this. I know my time is going, but it, it's going gonna, it's gonna, uh, gonna to help someone. One of, remember I said that it just associate, associate of project management professional, basically. That's what PMP means. It's just another, it's just another Prince 2 methodology, basically, not, nothing else. 
my after my youth service so i'm 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 sure you can see that from my accent and from my name i'm from nigeria and uh, and when i finished my nyc i did my nyc in abuja then and while i was doing my nyc project management was not an easy thing in nigeria this particular organization came to our camp and brought in a project management training project plus it was extremely expensive i'm talking about um some 13 years ago now or 14 years ago 14 years ago and and they came and and it was crazily expensive they were 75 grand or something that was what they were asking for and i and i said you know what i'm interested i read i read chemistry by the way i read chemistry in uni and i said but i knew chemistry was on the way for me so i said you know what? i'm interested but can i pay instrumentally can I pay this course instrumentally and all of that? And they agreed that I can pay. And I was getting a cut of my of my NYC salary. I was paying back every month until I was able to pay off. The Project Plus certificate that was on my CV was what made the my first employer to look at my CV and go interested and say, you know what, we're interested. You want to come for an interview and all of that. From Abuja to Lagos, and I got my first project management role just because I did project management uh, of certification, and I, I and I was always reading, always teaching myself on YouTube. Then it was it was crazy, even though it was slow, it was consuming data. But I was always training myself on how to use MS Project, how to use Primavera, all of the tools I was learning it myself. So when I put all of that on my CV and I got interview, and it was. It was quite easy. So for me, just just make that effort. Basically, it is that effort, and a lot of people will say that okay, this person is interested in that. But if you feel you're interested, but you're not nothing on your CV is showing that you're interested, then there's no point, you know, or stressing anyone else for for help. All right, the topics to cover. Topics to cover. What is a project? Constraint of a project. Successful, successful and failed project. We'll be talking about that. Project management, we've spoken more about that. Project management life cycle. We'll talk about the PM and the pursuit way. Stakeholders management, process mapping. We'll talk about stakeholders management. We'll talk about process mapping. Uh, all of these are things we'll talk about next week. We'll talk about the cardiac. I call it the cardiac. We'll talk about cardiac next week as well, fully, which is a constraint, assumptions, risk. As a project manager, or as a PMO person, these are your babies. These are things you're managing on a project. So we'll be talking more about how to go about it. Change control process. I've spoken a lot about change control process today already. We'll talk about that process as well, how to go about that from start to finish. Project reporting. As a project manager, remember, we said this earlier on as well, that you know what, Prince 2 talks about, you know, you must be able to manage performance. You must be able to report how project is going as a project manager, or even your life, it, uh, how you're managing your life, your reporting, you have to report, you have to do a project report. You have to see that at the end of the day or at the end of the year, or at the end of the month, to look at your bank account, to look at your career, to look at your life and just and just measure your performance, how we're doing. That's what project report is actually all about. Then we'll talk about resource management, lessons learned management, how do we document lessons learned management, Planning and scheduling. I'll talk more about planning. What are the things you need to talk about as a project manager? This is one of your tasks. Or as a PMO person, you are expected to be able to direct the team on how to plan the project. Document control. That's SharePoint, using the SharePoint. Then also tools you need to learn. If you really, really want to be successful in this, in this um, area, these are the tools you need to learn. You need to learn how to use your MS Word properly your PowerPoint. I know there is a training on Excel. If you can get yourself into that, you should be able to do that. And, and while I'm talking about Excel, I used to work with a guy in a particular organization. That guy was our MI lead. It's called our management information lead. Paul, the, the guy never went to any uni, never went to any university. Uh, all the guy knew how to use, all he knew how to use was Excel spreadsheet. He can manipulate anything on Excel spreadsheet to produce management information or, or report and all of that. And I think Power BI, no, I think Power BI is doing that at the moment as, as well. But this guy can do that on Excel spreadsheet. And I'm a record, and I will say this: the guy was actually on a thousand pounds per day. 
the guy never went to university. All he knew how to use was Excel spreadsheet and he was collecting a thousand pounds per day, all because he was just doing his reporting, writing all his macros or his VBAs and all of that. So, so just for you to, uh, to be able to understand how to use Excel. So there's a train on Excel, please take that serious as well. Very, very serious. You must be able to use SharePoint. Um, one of the ways to learn that is share, uh, to learn SharePoint is because SharePoint is an enterprise, is an enterprise solution. Getting a standalone is always very difficult. But one of the ways to learn that is to go on YouTube instead of um, instead of all the little skits of five minutes, six minutes skits. We always watch uh, comedy skits. You can spend time on YouTube. Please spend time on YouTube. YouTube is the best teacher. Uh, I'll tell people my best teacher so far in this journey in the last 14 years is actually YouTube. YouTube has helped me a lot. All of the tools, all of these tools that I learned from Avera, MS Project, Pathmaster, at risk and all of that, I, Visio, I learned all of that via YouTube. Okay, MS Project, you need to learn how to use an MS Project. Uh, if time permits us next week, I'll show you a very, very quick um, introduction to MS Project. If time permits us, please remind me. Uh, Visio as well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch a little bit about Visio on how to use your process mapping and all that. And Outlook is a, it's, it's a general stuff. You can use it. If you have Office 365, you should be able to use Outlook. And also Microsoft Teams. That's what most organizations are using now. Virtually all organizations are using Microsoft Teams now as their uh, collaboration center or communication tool. Okay. Uh, 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 Analyst is asking that, can I show the cardiac again? This is a cardiac, but don't, don't stress yourself about this. We'll still be talking uh, um, about this in details later on. Okay, so what are the rules you should be thinking about? What are the rules you should be thinking about as, um, as a project management person? You should be thinking about close like 10 different rules basically that you can apply for. You know, as a project analyst, as a project support analyst, as a PMO office, Someone, is, someone might be asking that, okay, what exactly is the difference between all of this? I'll tell you one thing. Apart from the PMO manager, apart from the PMO planner, apart from project manager, you see the first seven are actually the same thing. It's just nomenclature or whatever they are using within the organization. Some organization will tell you, we need a project analyst. All they are looking for is a PMO analyst as well. So if they're a PMO, if you've, if you're confident that you can handle a project analyst role and you can you see someone asking for a PM analyst role, please apply for it. It's the same thing. You see someone asking for a PMO support role, apply for it. You see someone asking for project support analyst, apply for it. Project administrator, apply for it. Project coordinator, apply for it. The only different, the only one that is quite strange among all of this is a PMO planner. PMO planner basically just the, this person must know how to use whether MS project. Primavera, depending on what they are using. Some are using smart sheets now. Some organizations are using smart sheet now. You must be able to use it. And also, let me put it this way. For all of this as well, one of the tools I didn't write in there that you must be able to use is Jira and Confluence. It is very, very popular now. Both Jira and Confluence are very, very popular now. You must be able to use it. And I'm happy that, um, uh, happy that uh, the, um, most of the most of the projects you'll be running during your internship, you will be running those projects on Jira as well as Confluence. So you will be able to learn learn more about about those tools and lay your hands on those on those tools. Question for the next two minutes, as we only have twenty five minutes left for me to run through Prince two. So any question from anybody? Two minutes to ask your question. I wish sure you're hearing me. That's strange that I didn't get any question. My three supports, can you see hear me? I need a yes, if you can see hear me, my three supports. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Femi, thank you, Ruke and Lado. All right, let's continue. Let's talk about Prince2 methodology. 
and um, you remember I said foundation? Yeah, I'm just going to talk about foundation now because foundation is, and you know one thing, is the same syllabus for both foundation of a both practitioner. It's now the technique of answering questions. Fortune is asking if I'm interested in planning. Can I get that here? Yes, you, you will get it, but trust me, remember this is all about introduction. This is all about introduction. You won't, you won't get detail here because we're not going to be talking about we're not going to be training you on MS project, both the basic and the foundation. I mean, both the basic and the advanced. You have to learn how to use MS project. There are, there are different trainings or courses on that already that for you to learn. And I think I might need to speak with Dej as well for people that really want to focus on planning. Yeah, we can. That, that's quite easy to set up an internship for you on that. So, you know, all we just want to learn is how to use those tools from start to finish. Can we have the last slide again, please? As Titi asking, are you talking about this? Okay, yep. Oh, can you get out with Blue Sky? Not, 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 not at this point. Not at this point. Okay, good. All right, let's talk about Prince 2 for the next 20 minutes. And if I know we've, I know it's late in the night. So apologies, guys. I always like to keep the time as a project manager, but we might run 10 minutes. So let me say this ahead. We might run 10 minutes um, um, more than the allocated time. Um, so just pardon me. If you have to, if you have to dock out, you are free to dock out. Hiya, is there any textbook you can recommend for project management? Two textbooks I would recommend, Pinball Guide and the Prince2 uh, Managing Project using Prince2. Those are two guides. Those are two textbooks I will, I would definitely recommend. Or, uh, Brilliant Project Management. You can actually buy Brilliant Project Management as well. It's um, it's a ten pound ten pound book on Amazon, but that will really give you the flavor of how the methodology or how the um, the uh, framework works. It will just give you a very summary understanding of what project management is all about. Uh, Hansel is asking me. Yeah, that's that's why I'm putting. So I'm putting the change request forward, and I have DG, I have DG and Bolaji here, who are my sponsor. So I'm sure they will approve that. So I'm 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 getting the approval. I think I'll get the approval from the back door. So yes, thank you, Hansel. Yeah, I've I've put the change request forward already. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. All right. So for Prince Two methodology, uh, we'll be talking about um, seven things. We'll be talking about the seven principles, the seven themes. And the seven processes, and uh, the last one basically is tailoring. Tailoring is part of the principles, so you will see me talking about six principles, and the last, the seventh principle is uh, is all about uh, tailoring. Yes, Tosin is brilliant project management. You can buy that; it's a ten pounds book. The purple one. Don't buy the pink one. Buy the purple one. All right. So we've spoken about this earlier on, so I'm just going to run through it to say what exactly is a project. So I'm teaching. I'm focusing more on Prince Two now. So these are things where you will learn it within Prince 2. And while I'm talking about this, this is where you will learn when you need to do what, what you need to do, what documents you need to, to produce and all that. So what is a project? What is a project? Like I said, a project is a temporary venture that exists to produce or define an outcome. Each project will have a great and unique objective. Every project will have a unique and agreed objective to say, you know what, what we want to do is we want to migrate 200 uh, laptops to Office 365 and also deploy SAP4 ANA on 100 of those laptops to be able to access SAP4 ANA and all that. So what is project management that you're here for? Project management as a discipline of applying. So it's all about what you are here to learn is to be able to apply specific processes and principles for you to be able to initiate a project, plan, execute, and manage the way that new initiatives or changes are implemented within an organization. Makes sense. So that is what project management is all about. We want to make sure that processes and principles are applied to initiate, plan, execute, and manage, and we're delivering what the project needs to be delivered. 
Okay. This might look tiny for, for some of you, so don't bother yourself. We'll take them one after the other. So for Prince 2, this is 2017. I said 2018 the last time. This is 2017. It was reviewed in 2017. So this is a full map of what Prince 2 says. This is what and what we think needs to be done from start to finish in order for you to manage your project. So they've said, you know, we've got seven principles. We have seven processes and we have seven things. So you have this map, you can Google it, just Google, just Google the process, Prince 2 process map. If you Google Prince 2 process map 2017, you will get this particular stuff. So let's talk about the seven principles. Um, let me, sorry, one minute, let me just stand up. You can, let, seven principles, these are the guiding obligations and good practices which determine whether the project is genuinely being managed using Prince 2. So in life, in life, we all have principles. Families have principles, nations have principles, organizations have principles. You know, uh, when we started this particular training, I laid down some principles to say these are our grand rules. Prince 2 also is saying that, you know what, if you want to manage your project using Prince 2 methodology, that are, these are the principles that must, that we have in place. There are seven principles. First principle says, you know what, continued business. And that talks about business case. We have to make sure that the project we are doing is in line with the business case for us to continue doing this business, continue delivering this project. We must make sure that roles and responsibilities are defined. Prince 2 is saying that, you know what, one of the principles that we hold there within Prince 2 is we need to learn from experience. We can't say, you know what, I need to do my I need to do my project all by myself. I don't even want to learn from anybody or they said they've done that project before. We need to learn from what has happened before. No, Prince is saying that, you know what, you need to learn from experience. Prince is saying, you know what, you can't afford to just go ahead and do a project from start to finish. Let's manage by stages. And you can see managing by stages is bringing in agile in some way. They thought about this ahead before agile even came to be to say, you know what, let's manage the stages. We can't say we want to deploy 200 Office 365. And what we are doing is prepare the, the laptops and then migrate the whole 200 Office 365 at once. No, let's manage the stages. Let's do finance department first. After we finish with finance department, maybe we can move to procurement. So that's what they are saying that let's manage this project in stages. So Prince is saying, you know what? We advise one of our principles is managing stages so that even if there are mistakes, we can always come back or we can always make um, amends to that. Focus on product. Focus on the product. The business case says that we need to do this. So you have to make sure your focus is on that product. Just focus on what we need to deliver. That product, that business, what business case is saying. Manage by exception. Because we're saying that we need to focus, because we need to say we need to make sure that we continue business, doesn't mean that there are no exceptions. There will always be exception. Exception in the sense that, you know, a project manager, we know as a project manager, the sponsor has the sole responsibility to approve the budget, but we are giving an exception to say, you know what, you can approve a budget within this particular frame. Like the questions that uh, uh, Ansel asked, the Ansel says, you know what, the 10 minutes to be approved by team, da, da, da. Maybe before the project, I've requested from, remember, remember I said something earlier on, I said, I will ask from Blue Sky if they can approve one more day for us to be able to complete this. You can see that. I said that, but when I spoke about the 10 minutes, I just said, you know, I'm, 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 I'm talking to you guys to so say, you know what, 10 minutes, I'll have 10 minutes to this. So 10 minutes is still within my threshold as a project manager to have. But if it's one more class, that is out of my, out of my, out of what I can approve. I need to go to my sponsor and get the approval right from the sponsor and get it communicated. You can see, so Prisci is saying, you know, there are exceptions. My, two, my 10 minutes addition is an exception, but the one more day can never be an exception. That's, that's huge. Meanwhile, in some, in some cases, maybe I've been given that kind of exception, 
I can say, you know, I'm adding one more day. I don't need to go get approval for that. I have that exception to do that. So that's what Prince is saying that in some cases, we definitely have exception. So this one says continued business justification. I always give this example because this example is, a, is always an interesting example to me. In 2006, in 2006, March, March 2006, there about, there was supposed to be something called Eclipse of the Moon. Eclipse of the Moon was supposed to happen, and uh, I was still high school in Ogumosho, Nigeria, Lautech, precisely. And Eclipse of the Moon was supposed to appear in, in Nigeria, and they say in Ogumosho it was going to appear. A lot of people traveled to Ogumosho to say, you know, I want to see the Eclipse of the Moon. We want to see the eclipse of the moon and all that. And they say, you know what? And, and there was a particular guy, it was supposed to happen on a Tuesday, if I'm still, if, I'm, if I can remember this properly. It was supposed to happen on a Tuesday at 7 a.m., where, you know, eclipse of the moon means it's dark. It's really, really dark, but it's actually in the afternoon or it's still quite sunny because the moon is covering the sun at that point. And this guy said, you can't view this thing with your naked eyes. You have to use your UV glasses and all of that. And a particular guy traveled also, got UV glasses, ordered for UV glasses so I can sell on that particular day. Meanwhile, the Nigerian method, methodological, whatever, whatever, got the whole thing wrong. Exit of the moon, we said it was going to appear in Nigeria on a Tuesday, or in the on a Tuesday. It appeared, and the guy said he was going to sell his UVI goggle on Monday, on, on the Tuesday morning, so that it will move very well. It's got guys. It's going to get guys in strategic locations and all of that. But Eclipse of the Moon happened on a Monday. Appeared on a Monday. Whoops. Now, do you think the guy needs to continue the project? There is no justification for that project again. The thing has happened already. So there are a lot of projects where it's been embarked upon and exactly about the mission. Where all we need to do is we need to make sure that we continue business justification. We need to, after we write our business case, are the benefits still worth the risk or cost? We want to ask the question, are the benefits, are the benefits still worth the risk or the cost? If it's a no, stop the project. Like Annalise said, I bought the mission. If it's a yes, continue to the next stage. Review your business case. Is the project what is a is the project worthwhile? Cost benefit analysis. Is the benefits is a cost and risk more than the benefit? If the cost and risk is more than the benefit, let's review. Let's abort, let's abort the mission. But if, but if the benefit outweighs the cost at the time, then let's go ahead. That is what we call continued business justification. So Prince 2 says, you know what? While you're running your project, always go back to your business case. Let's make sure that we're reviewing our business case. Let's make sure that we're justifying that the project is still worth doing. So as a project manager, your job is always to go back to your business case to review this. In some organizations, project manager is, is, is they ask project manager sometimes to write the business case. While in some organizations, they have the business analysts to write the business case. While in some organizations, they employ people, they employ one of, the, one of, these, one of these guys one of his auditors or whatever, uh, the uh, author Anderson, the, um, the, what are they called? The P the Pricewaterhouse Cooper guys and all of that to come in, the BCG guys to come in, analyze the project and write the business case for them. And they now continue to review the business case. So Prince is saying, you know what? Continue business justification. Remember, one of the things we said again is learn from experience. Let's learn from both successes and mistakes of the past. Let's identify the document, let's document, let's identify, let's document, and let's disseminate. And this is where your lessons learned document comes in. When you start a project, one of the first, the moment you get a project mandate from the sponsor, the first thing, the first thing you want to see is the lessons learned document or log, or you want to start developing your lessons learned log to say, you know what, this particular project what are the things we've learned from the past or we've seen from a project that seems similar? What can we learn before we go into this project? And that's why he's saying, you know what, you need to recruit members with experience in similar projects and get that document done. That will definitely help you 
to actually go well with your project. Next principle, number three principle from Prince Two says, you know what? Roles and responsibility must be defined. I don't want to hear that, you know what? Tosi is the one doing this and Tosi is saying, no, nobody told me. He should, that should be fortune. <laughs> no, Lekon is saying, you know what? I thought I was the one doing it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I got frustrated yesterday and I had to speak with my projects, my PMO, my, my program manager. I'm working as a PMO leader. I had to speak to my program manager and say, you know what? There is this particular reporting architecture. John, who exactly is handling this part, this reporting architecture? I've been in this particular meeting where they say, you know what, we are the ones, those the, the particular team is saying, you know, we are the one handling our reporting architecture. I've spoken to that particular project as well. They are handling it. This particular same thing not seems to be defined. Can we call a meeting, a two hour workshop? Let's iron this thing out. Let's know who is doing what before we even go find to this thing and all that. And in some organization, you will see that, oh, because rules and responsibilities are not defined. So this one say, is everyone clear what is expected of them? So Prince 2 is saying, you know what? Let's have a clear understanding of rules and responsibilities. And here is where we have two things come into play here. The first is called RACI, or some people call it RAM. RACI means responsibility. R in responsibility means, um, R means responsibility. A means accountability. C means consult. I means inform. While the RAM is called responsibility, assignment, oops, matrix. Okay, so this is called the RACI, Responsibility, Accountability, Consulting, Inform. When you look at this particular thing, this part is, is more like a table. And the table has key activities. And within those key activities, this is where you see, you know what, uh, who is responsible for this? Who is accountable for this? Who should we consult for this thing? Who should we inform for this thing? That is what that defined rules and responsibility is saying. This must be defined. We want to understand who is doing what. Well. Projects are cross-functional everyday line management structures are not suitable. So we need to know exactly who is doing what. Managed by stages. Like I said, is the project worth continuing? We must have a go or no go point within the project. And within Prisu, Prisu advice that we have two stages. The first stage is, is called the initiation stage. Are all the firm foundations in place? Then stage two is covers delivery of a project specialist and also plans. And within this, we have different plans. We have a project plan, which is approved by the project board. We have the stage plan, which is approved by the project manager. And we have the team plan, which is approved by the team manager. So within this, we have a go or no go area. And I'm sure by the time you start, by the time you start your internship, whenever you're developing your plan, you will definitely see some of these things saying, you know, you know what, at this point, can we review this stage gate? We're moving from stage one, stage gate one to stage gate two and see, are we really, really, are we really, really uh, are able to go ahead? It's a no go or a go decision. So we have, our project sponsor or the governance at that point in time coming to tell us we can proceed with that. Uh, define roles and responsibility. A little bit of that. Sorry, my editing is wrong here. Focus on product. The next one is focus on product. So for focus on product, are we delivering to the quality required? Remember, I told you quality required talks about conformance requirement and what fitness for use. So are we really, really delivering? So quality required, what is the estimated work, the estimate of work, resources, and activities? Can we reduce scope creep? I said earlier on, who is responsible to assign the racing? Well, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the project manager to work on the racing, work with the team to understand who is doing what, who should we assign, who should we consult, who should we inform in doing this? Okay, so 
scope cream. I know I spoke about gold, gold plating the other time about you uh, uh, exceeding customer's expectation. Scope creep basically is you undergoing a change that is not approved. So if a change is not approved and you, and you carry it out, that is called scope creep. What you've done to that scope, you do creep the scope because that is not what the scope is saying. You've done a change that is not within the scope of work. So at that time we're saying, you know what, you're doing um, scope, scope um, 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 creeping. Does that, does that make any sense? Okay, so so we have to focus on the product, ident identify products, the product description. This is where we're writing out what is the product description. This is where we'll talk about the quality of the product. What are, what are we expecting the product to, to have, the, the, fe the features of the product before we can say, and we have to have what we call the acceptance criteria. This is where we will write our acceptance criteria. At the end of a project, to say, you know what, this is the acceptance criteria. If these are not met, then we can go ahead with the project. So as a project manager, as a PMO person, these are things you're focusing on and these are the documents that you will be preparing. Now, let me quickly put this. If you're working with a very, very established organization, you don't need to develop some of these documents or all of these documents. They will always have a central project management office or a central portal within the organization where they have all of these documents already, templates. All you just need to do is pick up those templates and write and just fill up and just fill up the templates, basically. Does that make sense? So that is what we have for, uh, for that. Okay. I'm running ahead of my time now. Next to that is, uh, Lastly is, have I spoken about managed by exception? Ah, I jumped managed by exception. Sorry, no, I, was, I haven't spoken about it. Managed by exception, like I said earlier on, it saves senior managers time, no need for regular meetings. You can imagine if, if I have to say, guys, pause, let me quickly call the Jambology and ask for approval to extend the meeting by 10 minutes. You understand that's that's a waste of time and i say you know what uh, and they jump uh, and bolaji say you know what let's quickly call the meeting let's see okay how can we do that that's that's a waste of time when uh, you know what they can always give me the approval and say you know what i uh, if you want to go 30 minutes above time you're good to go 30 minutes above time and all of that but if it was a a, a whole a, a whole day ahead then they, i need to call them and, and get approval so that's why money by exception just saves time it saves your money just time no need for regular meetings establish tolerance for the six project objective. Let's establish tolerance. Tolerance for the time, tolerance for the cost. Say, if you're spending more than, if your change is more than 25,000 pounds, you know what, you can't, get, you can't give your approval, Mr. Project Manager, it needs to go through the board. If the quality is gonna be affected, it needs to go through the board. If the benefit is not gonna be realized, if this particular benefit is not gonna be realized, it needs to go through this. But if this benefit is not gonna be realized at this particular time and all that, you're still free to go ahead. Does that make any sense? That's what we call benefit. That's what we call managing by exception. Sorry, guys, my chat room is gone. Okay, it's back now. Yeah, I've spoken about this. I'll work on that. Tailored to suit the project environment. Tailored to suit the project environment. So, Prisu is saying, you know what? And that's exactly what I said. I won't tell you this how you need to do it. But we expect you to, you know what, take Prince 2 and tailor it to the kind of project you're doing. If you're working on a civil service project, Prince 2 can be tailored to that. If you're working on uh, a road construction project, Prince 2 can be tailored to that. If you're working on application development project, Prince 2 can be tailored to that. If you're working on recruitment projects, Prince 2 can be tailored to that. So that's what they say, apply Prince 2 with common sense. Adapt Prince 2 to suit your project needs. All projects are different. The level of complexity, the cultural context, the risk, the scale, and all of that. that. But you can try as much as possible to make sure that you tailor it to suit the kind of project environment you're working on. Any question for one minute before I move to my, to my next slide? Any question? Tommy, I think I've, read, I've answered your question.
Okay, Annalise is asking me that, can I explain lessons learned? Lessons learned basically is, you know what, as you go along the project, and uh, one of the lessons, one of the lessons we're learning today is, you know what, two hours or four hours might not be enough to cover all introduction I need to cover with you. That lesson has been learned, you understand? So for the next set that are coming, we have to make sure that we extend it by, by um, another week, which is three weeks, basically. Does that make any sense? Or I will need to streamline my material to cover just two, 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 two days. Does that make any sense? So you can say, analysis. we were trying to learn, lessons learned. We're learning lessons as we go along the line. Does that make any sense? Um, Jubu is asking, kindly explain manage by exception. Manage by exception, like I said earlier on, is tolerant. Now, let's assume, let's assume, uh, let me use something that is very, very tiny. Okay. You can, let's assume you're waiting for a bus, bus station in, in UK, you're waiting for a bus. And while you're waiting for a bus, or no, no, not a bus, let me use flight. Flight is a typical example because I read something in Nigeria recently as well, which they've always been doing that in the, um, in the um, developed world, really. To say, if your flight is delayed by two hours, if your flight is delayed, you can reclaim your flight ticket. Then I say, no, not just delayed. If your flight is delayed by two hours, you can reclaim your flight ticket. You can ask for your flight ticket again. And I read that last two weeks or last week in Nigeria that they are trying to put that process in place as well. Now, that two hours is more like exception to say, you know what, if you if your flight is delayed for more than two hours, you can claim for your, your money. But if you're still within two hours, that means they are giving the flight two hours of tolerance. Two hours of tolerance for them. So you've got two hours of tolerance. They are mine by exception. They are not just a blank stop to say, you know what, Flights cannot be delayed. If flight get delayed by one minute, they pay you back. No, they've given them allowance, they've given them tolerance. And same thing goes with project. As a project manager, whenever you're managing projects, uh, the sponsor, the sponsor of the project will tell you, you know what, um, um, Jubu, if your project is going to get delayed by two days, I think you can give the approval. You don't have to come to me to get approval to say, you know what, my project is going to be, the, this project is going to get delayed by two days. You don't have to come back to me. You can approve that. But if a project is going to be delivered for, I mean, delayed for more than two days, then you need to come to the project sponsor and tell the project sponsor, does that make any sense? So for you, you have some allowance to manage your project by except there are exceptions given to you, exception in the times of cost, exception in the times of money, exception in the times of, 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 of scope that can change. And all that so that's what we call manage by exception okay good stuff so principles uh christopher is asking me to go back to uh experience learn from experience that's that okay good so let's talk about the several things the several themes of a project. The several themes say, you know what? Let's talk about business case. These are things that must be addressed continually within the project. And this is all about your life. This is all about your life, really. Remember, if you're going for the internship, if you're going for the internship, you'll be paying, you'll be paying, I think, 300 pounds or, or, or 350 or 200 pounds. I, I can't remember now. That's if you're going for the internship. If you're going for the internship, let's, let's put a cap to that. Let's say it's 300 pounds. So you've written a business case to say 300 pounds is how much I'm spending to be able to gain this particular knowledge. The benefits I will be getting at the end of the day is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, with that, as a project progresses, you want to look at your 10, 10 things you've listed down. Can I justify that this particular program is giving me these 10 things? That's one. Organization, organization also talk about roles and responsibilities. Do I know my role? Blue Sky, do they know their role? The people I'm working with, do they know their role in this particular stuff? Okay, next to that is quality. What is the quality of things being delivered? The quality of training, the quality of internship being delivered? 
do we have a plan? I could remember they just saying that, you know what, guys, you need three hours per day. They were saying, guys, you need at least three hours per day. If you really want to be successful in this internship, so you want to plan yourself to say, you know, or three, um, seven to eight in the morning before I, I go to work. I need to do that. My lunch time, 12 to one, and maybe eight to nine in the night. You've planned yourself. So there's a plan. You can see that these are things you, you can actually apply to your life. And that's what, exactly what Prince Sue is saying. Then you want to talk about what are the risks. The risk of this is, oh, oh, I'm in Nigeria. Sometimes, you know, data, data might just, the MTN or, or Airtel or whatever they call themselves, they might just drink up my data unnecessarily and all that. So that, that's a risk. Risk of, you know what, power holding, corporation not bringing in power and you not being able to make use of those three hours, not you being using the three hours change along the line. Maybe I might need to move from a house to a French house that has got generator so that I can be able to do that or change. My children are, will be on holiday. They might be disturbing and I need to spend time with them. So I need to work on that. You can see. So these are things we need to mind and also progress. You need to make the progress about those 10 things. How, how am I progressing? Am I getting what I need to get? You can see that these seven things are things you need to manage throughout the project. And these are critical. So as a project manager or as a project management person, these are the seven key things you're managing throughout your project, your business case, the organization itself, the quality of the work that is being done, the plan, whether the plan is being adhered to, the risk is being managed. There are changes. Are you managing the changes or you're just allowing the changes to occur? And are you managing the progress? Okay, so let's take business case. The business case, the purpose of the business case is to establish mechanism to judge whether the project is desirable, viable, achievable as a means to support decision making in its continued investment. Okay, so I've got I've got 89 people. I, I had 96 people on this call before. So I I'm just gonna pick. I'm just gonna pick you at random next week. So I want everybody to go to go back and develop a business case. The business case is pick Brazil, pick Brazil as an example. Okay, and the business case is: Do you think develop a business case for the deployment of COVID nineteen vaccine in Brazil? Okay, deployment of COVID-19 vaccine in Brazil. Let's write a business case for that. Rule out, let's call it rule out of COVID-19 vaccine in Brazil. So write a business case. Next, next week, I'll just pick up anybody to share with us what they have in their business case. Does that make any sense? So I'll just, I'll pick out, I'm, I'm sure I can pick five people at random. So I, I, I wouldn't appreciate if, if I pick you and you're telling me, oh, sorry, I didn't do it and all that. I want everybody to get involved. I want you to write that business case. And let me say this, your business case doesn't have to be 300 pages. Your business case doesn't have to be 1,000 pages. Your business can actually be two pages just to show the justification of what needs to be done. But there are some key elements that must be in your business case that I would love to see in your business. And one of the ways to do that is just go on Google. Just type in business case templates. Just type in business case templates. On Google. Okay. Okay. So that is my 12.10 done today. We still have a lot to cover, which we didn't cover today. So, but I need to keep the time as promised. So any question? Um, Fola is asking the author of those, of those test books. Now, you know, you know what, there are no authors. Just type in Pinbox sixth edition. PDF on um, on um, on Google, 
and also uh, Prince Two. Manage successful projects. With Prince Two. Yeah. So those are the two names. Pink Box Six Edition PDF or Managing Successful Project with Prince Two. Is a business case meant to be presented to the project sponsor? Very fantastic question, Tommy. Okay, so in some organizations, in some organizations, the business case is supposed to be developed by the project sponsor. Normally, that is a procedure. The business case is supposed to be de developed by the sponsor, given to the project manager, but most Organizations now ask the project manager and the business analyst to go and write the business case with their input, with the input from them, and they will present it to the project sponsor for the project sponsor to make a decision if the project is worth doing. Don't forget that business case is what? It's a judge whether the project is desirable, viable, achievable as a means of support decision. So we want to see, should we continue, is there justification for this particular project? So the business case is the one that will tell us that. And it, the support project sponsor will be the one to make that decision, whether we want to go ahead or not. And like you can see the yellow, the yellow orange, whatever here, says, you know what, the executive owns the business case. So the sponsor, the executive owns the business case, but most times they always tell the project manager to write it, as well as a business analyst to help in writing it, while they just review and give the approval. Make sense? Good. Next week, next week, next week, please let's make it early, eight o'clock. Bang on, we're going. All right, I won't need to wait for five minutes. I'll just, I'll just get into it, eight o'clock next week, please.